Well, here we are again. And this is looking really good. And it's ready now to put the prairie grass on there, which means we have to talk a little bit about prairie grass and, and some different ideas. First of all, in order to get um, to get an idea of what you're modeling or what you need, you need to have books and you need to have pictures. Now, many of you know that uh, I spent a lot of time out in uh, Colorado. Matter of fact, uh, four months ago, I got an opportunity to literally drive my entire model railroad one to one. I went started in Loveland and I worked all my way down to Pueblo. I've been to Cheyenne. I have hundreds of pictures and I shared some of them on the Facebook page but really the hundreds of pictures that I took I wouldn't share with you guys because frankly seeing prairie grass over and over and over again just and, and different scenes doesn't really inspire any of you to do anything but it does help me in actually getting a plan together and and if you can't do that then the next thing to do is to go find these kind of books that, that talk about pictures and, and break it down into certain areas and they're all over the place. This happened to be Colorado. Now the area that I'm modeling, and there's a couple different areas here. Here's a great picture here of um, this right here where we've got pine trees, we've got aspens, and we've got the, the prairie grass right down front here. This is right up against the foothills, which is a lot of what um, yeah, that I, uh, I model. There's an also another couple really great photos, one in here that I want to share with you. There we go. This is very much what we're modeling, okay? Um, yeah, it's pretty boring down here, and that's all it is. It's just a variety of grass colors with little green weeds and things like that throughout. The other thing you look at is, is obviously these type of books. Um, this is, happens to be on the Southern Division, which is um, one half of my railroad is the Southern Division. And it's got some great photos of, of just fall, the different colors. Um, granted, it's focused around the railroad, but it's really helpful in, in actually creating those images because that's what we're modeling. We're modeling where the railroad's at. So take a look at what's around there to kind of give you a hand. Another great book I have, this is The Buildings of Colorado. Now, this is about buildings in particular, and it just gives... Um, a lot of history and information. It's a great book. I, you know, if I want to model something in 1953 or 1959, in my case, I can look through here, see what it is, see how tall it is, get an idea of it. A lot of history, a lot of photos in there. So it, it really is a great book. Also some pictures in here that are kind of helpful. So that being said, you really have to have an idea of what you're doing. And then the next step you want to do is you want to experiment with different grasses until you get exactly what you're looking for. Now, this is part, just part, of my stash of static grass. I literally prefer to buy static grass by the pound, okay? I have an entire railroad to do of prairie grass, and I am really trying to figure out how to do it. So when I was working on this, I, like I said, I talked to Marty, and I had a chance to talk to Marty. And Marty did a great article. Um, I'm going to say it was last year around the October time frame uh, on modeling on his uh, railroad and using fall colors and fall grasses. And I took that information and then expounded upon it. And I, after talking to Marty at the uh, convention um, in Portland, it gave me a great opportunity to sit down and kind of share ideas and do different things. Static grass. Now, let's start about with the products. There is not a static grass product I haven't bought. Okay, I've tried them all. And I'm going to be fair with you. The key to getting these type of effects is not using one. It's not using two. It's not even using three. It's oftentimes using four and five colors and sizes. So let's take a look at it. Most people buy the two millimeter, the really small stuff. That comes in, oh, Woodland Scenic sells a lot of it. And I have nothing against Woodland Scenics. I like it. Um, but if, unless I'm doing a lawn or something like that, all the same size is not going to cover it. But this two millimeter stuff, I'll show you how we can use this to, to affect how the layout looks. 
and I and I get it from Cynic Express too. This is two millimeter as well. Typically, what I like to buy is the six. Now, this is six millimeter static grass. This is from Heckle. This is green. Um, I don't use a lot of this. Actually, what I use probably more of is um, this is the uh, six millimeter wild grass beige. I use a lot of this. My base color is this six mil millimeter from Silflo, and this is a pure yellow color. You can see it's a, a, a much lighter color than the other one. Oop, let's try that like that. I would, I wish they came out with this in these big bulk packs because, quite frankly, um, that's expensive to buy. So I tend to use a little more of this, but I get enough yellow in there so that it, it actually notes. So six millimeter. So let's take a look at it. So at six millimeter in HO scale, that's about 21 inches, a little more than that, but it's about 21 inches tall. The prairie grass that I can run into is at least two feet deep, but there's also other areas where you get weeds and all that that are, you know, we're hitting close to three feet. Thus, we come in to 10 to 12. And I use this same grass, but not as as much quantity, but I want to get that blend in there. And then I like some of the, I buy it also, this is uh, 10 millimeter. This is also, uh, it's a little greener, but the key is to get a nice blend of what you're working with. The next thing you need to, to realize when you, after you get the colors that you need. Now I don't have all the colors. I'm leaning more toward the fall, so most of my colors are fall color. But you do notice I have green because I add a little green in certain areas because the truth of the matter is, is that where there's water and different things like that, it tends to be a little greener and so I want a little green in there. And plus it gives me an opportunity to vary my grass and give it a real look that looks really nice. Next thing comes up is static grass applicators. This is not static grass applicator. I bought this a while ago, like in 10 plus years ago. Um, I'm nothing against this product. It's never really worked good for me. Um, I know some folks that, 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 that do use it. Um, it uses batteries, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just hate batteries because whenever I come out to work, they're dead. That's always the case. What I will say is, if you want it, and, and that's about $200, and I don't think it's come down much. It's probably now about 170 or something like that. It's awfully expensive. This is from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine, the March, April 2010. You can still download it. I checked to make sure you could still download it. This shows you how to build three of them. They use a, 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 a grass, um, a fly swatter, electrical fly swatter. That's this one down here. They do another one just using a battery. That one's over here. Or you can go for the granddaddy of them all, the 110 volt static grass applicator. Now, I work in with electrical all the time. So I'm not afraid to work with 110. In fact, I wired this building up myself. Did the complete, put 100 amp service out here and everything. So for me to work with 110 is the equivalent of me working with 12 volts. It doesn't, it's not a big deal for me. I've worked with 210 or 220. Um, I, you know, that's not an issue for me. So I built the static grass applicator, the 110 volt static grass applicator. And let me tell you what, this is fantastic. I'll show you it. You can actually see, I'll try and get pictures really close of the grass standing up on edge. This is nothing more than a simple uh, sour cream container with all the works inside. And this holds my entire works, including a light that comes on when it turns on, a switch on top. It works fantastic. I have w used this. It cost me maybe 20 bucks to build. 20 bucks. 170, 20 bucks, okay? Simple PVC pipe cap on the end that I got. This is an end cap that you can get that's for sealing PVC pipes. And so it really is kind of nice. It's a nice application and we'll show you how that works. The, um, so that's kind of the tools you'll need. Again, my glues, 
uh, a little straw and a brush, and that's all you're going to need to put the static grass on there. Now let's talk about blending static grasses. This can right here is what I call my base blend. And you're going to say, okay, Mike, how did you make your base blend? Okay. If you take a look in here, I'm going to actually pull a bunch of this out, and I'm going to set it right on top of the lid here. This is a blend of two millimeter, six millimeter, 10 millimeter, all the yellow colors, the gold colors, the brown colors all mixed together. And you're going to say, well, what's the quantity? Well, see, I reached in the bag and grabbed some and threw it in there, and I reached in the bag and grabbed some and threw it in there, and I reached in the bag and grabbed some of that and threw it in there. And then I shuffled it all up and I looked in there and said, okay, that's close, but I want a little more of this. And then that's how I got it. Now I have enough now in here that I can do this whole uh, Loveland to, Long, to Longmount um, area all done in static grass and it's ready to go. Now, that's my base, okay? So if I wanna do, let's take this for example. If I wanna do a little greener grass down here, what I'll do is I'll take and I'll add a little more greener to my base when I put it in my static grass. So I'll add a little more and I'll put it in there and I'll set it in there and I'll let it go in there. And then when I'm done doing that, I take that and that goes into my base. And that's how I make my base, okay? Rocket science, right? <laughs> Conserve the grass and go on your way. The other thing I do is once the grass is on there and it's had a day to dry, I take a vacuum cleaner and I put, I have a shop vac and I got a set of nylon stockings from my wife that are run, have runs in them, but I've taken that and I've made a little thing that I can rubber band around the end of it and I simply go over the area that I've static grass and I collect all the loose static grass so only the grass that's glued in stays. I then take that and that also goes in here and guess what there's also a little bit of the soil and a little that kind of comes up and that's fine it just all goes in there it's okay it's fine it's not that much it's not enough that's going to make a difference. This is really relatively sorry. It's not going to come across off. And I'm going to put more glue on it, so it's going to glue down even more. So that's how I go about this. So I've talked to you about the colors and those type of different things. Now we're actually going to do the project. So you understand what I have to do. So the very first thing I've done is I've looked for pictures and I've decided an area that I want to model. Then I took, around, I took and mixed up and figured out my color grasses and how I want to do it. Is this going to be a tall area? Is it a swampy area? Is it, what is it? And I decided, okay, I want grasses about this high. I want to match. Now we're going to do prairie grass. So the majority of the grass is six millimeter, but I have some tens in there and twelves, and I have some twos in there, and we'll adjust as we go through, and I'll show you how you can adjust as you go through. From there, I'm going to take my static grass and I'm going to decide from my diorama here or in the case of my layout or whatever, what it is that I want to do. So in this case here, I'm going to try, I'm going to, obviously, normally I could work in an area this size, but I'm going to break it up so you can see how you can blend in and mix your colors and get them together so it'll help you out. So give me a few minutes here to get things set up and we'll come back and we'll get that done. Until then, have another cup of coffee. I'll probably drink a pot today before we're done with this. So here we go. We're going to work on this here. And I'm going to, I have sitting here in front of me some photos of what I'm looking to achieve. Some hills, some rocks, and things like that. And you can see there's a variety of different yellows in here. So what I do is I keep this in front of me so that when I'm working with it, I can compare and make sure I'm, I'm actually achieving what I want to do. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go with base right here. We're just going to start with uh, this area right in here. I'm not going to focus in here. I'm just going to get this lower area down in here. But I want to I want to, because as I go to do this and add more glue, I want to kind of work up the hill a little bit with my glue. So I'm taking my 50-50 glue and my brush, and I'm mixing it up. And I'm just basically going to just spread it right on top of that, just like so. 
And then I want it to kind of go up the heel a bit. I don't want it to just sit there. I kind of want a, a, a little variety. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And I'm pulling enough glue here that it's going to cover onto this. So it's got glue everywhere it needs to. So the first batch is probably going to just soak in and then the second one will sit on top. Okay. Now, I'm working with a small area and I want the grass not to be so thick. One of the things about these, these containers is they tend to let a lot of grass out. So what I've got in here is I've got a simple paper piece that I cut to make it a little smaller. And then I'm just going to grab some of my base here. And I'm going to add it right inside there. And I'm going to stick uh, maybe two clumps. That'll be enough. I'm going to put the lid back on. Now I'm plugged in already. I'll turn this on and see a light comes on there. Okay. This is my probe on the end, my grounding probe. I just put it like this and then I'm just going to just work with it. So here we go. Looks like I need a little more. I'm just going to grab just a little more. we go. Now I'm going to take and empty this out. Just dump it in there. And I'm going to take it back. There's no more grass because I don't really want to add more grass. I just want to make sure that my grass stays up on end. So I'm just going to kind of go through and just try and get it to stand up a little more if it needs to. There we go. There's our first batch grass that we're going to let dry. I'll take it here and bring it up close to the camera so you can see it. You'll see different sizes and you can still see the soil underneath there. our first set. So you can see there's browns and there's a couple things. There's real tall grass and there's real short grass. I'll take a photo of it and I'll show it to you when we get done. Now I've got some grass around here where I worked. I'm going to vacuum all that up and I'm going to vacuum this uh, before we go on to the next step. And I'm just again I'm just taking a shot back with a nylon stocking and collecting all the loose grass that's left there. And I'll show you where we go from there. And again, nice odd pattern. Not, not. I, I'm not trying to. I don't want hard lines. So one thing I will say is, if you work in a large area, 
don't make straight lines. Kind of vary it and move it around so it gets a nice vary, so it looks natural. Don't do straight lines. I know it's a habit for us to do the to, okay, I'm going to paint and work in this square and paint the square. Well, yeah, great. Paint that square, but then move it in and out of that square or, or stay within the square, but make lines going every which way so you don't end up with a hard line unless you want one. Now, if you're coming between prairie grass and, uh, say, a farm where they're doing wheat, well, yeah, you're going to have a straight, solid line, and you want that straight, solid line. But think about what it is you're doing before you go on to it. So in any case, let this dry for about 45 minutes, and we'll be back. <laughs> we go. Didn't think you want to listen to that, but uh, yeah, I'm going to just pull out the excess grass and just put it right back into my container. There we go. fair amount in there and that's ready to go now um, I'm apologize for the first segment's uh, uh, audio I uh, forgot to turn my mic on just like I had it there when I had the uh, vacuum cleaner off and I don't always notice that when I'm doing things so anyway here we are we're back at it now as you can see we have this nice pattern going in through here and this time I'm going to add a little more I'm going to add a little more of the uh, this this color right here and maybe a tad of this when I go to mix this up and I'm going to bring it up to the heel and kind of crest over the top of it and bring it down so I kind of give it a little variety there so again I'm going to take my 50-50 glue here And my brush and I'm literally just gonna go right back right back into there where I was before just like so what I'll do this time is I'm gonna add just a lot of variables to this when I do it this time. I want also a kind of a bare spot that's got just a little bit of grass in there. So we'll get all these up into here. And again I've got this nice and soaked and you see it's it's pretty covered with glue. It's just because there's so much glue on there already in that dirt it's going to, uh, it's, the glue is going to sit on top, much like you see right there. All right. Yeah, well, get my static grass anchor here. I'm going to grab a scoop of the basic, and then I'm going to add. Breaking it up a bit so that it has a chance to actually mix in there. And you know, I think I want Yeah, I'll stick another bit of that. Doesn't look quite as green as I want it to be. Maybe I'll add some of this brown. There's two in this two 
really fine, but it, it does get mixed in there and that'll add some color to it. Again, I still have my paper in place there. There we go. And we grab the probe on the end. And away we go. I don't like it. It's not quite as green as I wanted it to be, so I'm going to add a little more green to this. And I'm actually going to add hmm. yeah, it's going to have to work for this. I might break away for a second because I can't. I'm missing the green that I like to use to highlight my green. I should have a, it's this bag right here, but I have one open, so I'm going to be back in maybe just a little bit, but I'm going to add, go ahead and add some more here. I'll be back in just a second. I'm gonna go grab that green so I can. Okay, so now we're back. And I got my green, this is my green. It's a little more greener than any of the other ones there. And it's actually open. I'm just trying to get some out of it. It's actually easier just to pour it in here going to show it to you but static grass so it gets all over the place there we go nice green color in there I don't want too much of it I want just enough so it change it just slightly. shades there. Now, one thing you'll notice about prairie grasses, things like that, is they don't all stand up. There's places where it kind of lays down and some different things like that. Like I have a kind of a real nice bare spot sitting in here. You can really see into the dirt. But down here, I want to kind of create it like the wind has blown it just a bit. So I'm going to kind of just press it down, not really press it down, just kind of knock it down a bit. And that'll create just a little variety of it, giving it kind of that feeling that it looks like real prairie grass. Not, you don't want to get too carried away, but just a little bit here and there looks really nice. And um, what I'll do is I'm going to bring this up closer to you here and see if you can see 
the different shades. I don't know, but I've got like the first part of here is really pretty yellow. It's real yellow, like down in here, and then it kind of changes to a brownish color, and then back in here it's green. So I don't know if you can see that. Again, I'll take some photos of this and see what you can see. It's really hard because I got a monitor in front of me and I'm trying to get the camera and so I see the monitor and it's a little difficult. But anyway, there you go. That's what that does. Now, the last part, of course, we didn't do right here in front. And that's because I want to create maybe a little more yellower grass. So we're going to take this last part and take this and dump that in there to get that green still is in there and it's just going to mix in with all that other stuff. It's going to be so much that it'll just begin to blend together and it'll look just fine. And again, it just gives your, your grass, your prairie grass, that effect of a real blend of different colors in there, which is exactly what it does. So the next step is I'm going to actually put in this uh, same glue again. You know, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to be patient. Scenery takes time. It's really truthful. And if you want it to look nice, you take the time. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to come back and vacuum it up because there's grass all over this and I really don't want it to be matted down. I want to kind of have it standing up a bit like maybe it's a, uh, an area where some straw was growing there, where wheat was growing there and it's kind of the straw that's left behind. Something of that nature. So I'm going to hold off on this and let it dry and we'll come back as soon as it's dried and we'll vacuum it up again and then we'll, we'll do the front there and then we'll begin to add some bushes and some, some different things that you can add to it and some ideas that I have and we'll experiment a little bit. Anyway, we'll see you in about 40 minutes.